Welcome back to the Sunday review edition of the On The Drip podcast. The authorities on backing slow horses, but enthusiasts of spinning yarns. Declan, how are you? Good, good. Um, I've backed so many slow horses in my time um, that they're actually starting to keep track of it. <laughs> the bookies are. Even Ned's. Yes. They're keeping, they're keeping track of how many slow horses are back because they're, they're thinking I might be approaching the record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, no, look, it's good. Sunday review. I, I felt last, last week was a resounding success. Mm. Uh, we're definitely in a better state, I would say, mm. this Sunday. I don't know about you, but well, I certainly am. <laughs> well, I wanted to bring something. I wanted to admit something. And I want you to... I, fucking, I knew you were a virgin. <laughs> well, <laughs> you massive virgin. Hey. Hey, <laughs> this might be a bit more shocking to you. Okay, uh, and I just want you to hear me out. Accept what I say, without judgment. I just want you to hear what I have to say. Yeah, okay. I might be a non-alcoholic beer guy. I uh, mate, look, I, you know me. I'm, I'm not judgmental. Um, No, look, do you know what? There was a conversation that happened at uh, my mum and dad's place last weekend about about this very thing. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. And particularly if you're, you're for whatever reason, deciding not to drink at said occasion and you're not going to be sipping on, I don't know, Coke Zero for for three or four hours straight. Wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, talk me through it. Did you you have a... Did you have a... um, an experience last night i did so basically i've i was as i was saying to you before i was just working myself to the bone i was just doing some hard yak yesterday i'm talking i'm talking front lawns i'm talking back lawns i'm talking nature strips lol i'm talking i'm talking <laughs> yeah, genuine, hedges genuine nature strips i'm talking whippersnippering i'm talking i'm talking the whole kit and caboodle yeah you you know what you've got got your own house now mate you've, you've got a property that you need to look after it's your domain you well need to, you need to keep it in tip-top shape because mate because you know what if you don't it shows a complete lack of respect for yourself no well said don't don't look at the lawn out there it's kind of dead <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah maybe you went a bit too turbo with, with the <laughs> weed killer but hey, hey. It's, a le- it's a lesson learned <laughs> it is <laughs> it's a lesson learned we have to keep drifters headquarters somewhat of a standard because if we don't, then who will? But, you know, after all of that, we had Prue's family come over, which was lovely. It was a, it was a lovely do. And I was, man, I was working hard there too. I was on the barbie. I was just, you know, feeding mouths and keeping smiles on faces. Jeez, you just, you've, you've just been sounding so masculine this podcast. <laughs> Apart from one, <laughs> one thing. But no, keep going. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Well, I was, I was, Prue was like, all right, I'm going to duck to the shops. Do you want anything? I'm like, you know what? I really feel like a beer, but I really don't feel like... Because I was in the sun all day. I was like, I reckon two beers, I'll be on my ass. Yeah, yeah, get me, yeah. Get me some out, non-alcoholicies. And I must say, I was frothing them. They were really, really nice. Yeah. I've, I've, tried, I've tried a couple. Um, I've never bought one for myself. Um <laughs> I'm going to see how long it takes me to actually buy something like that for myself. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, look, they, and they taste they taste all right, most of them. Mm. Um, and, and yeah, look, I, I, I truly think beer is, is delicious, just the flavour. So mm. That's what I felt like? Yeah. I just didn't want the alcohol. Yeah, you, you wanted like a nice, crisp, clean drink that wasn't mm. sweet. Yes, exactly. Apart right. from water. Um, yes. Water sometimes, it's just like a big cold glass of water after you've been working. It's, it's just... Oh, something about it, isn't it? All right, so top three drinks for you. Just in general? In general. Oh, beer's number one, easy. I, I yeah. love beer. All right. Yeah, oh, mate. Cooper's Pale Ale is, is absolutely delicious. I reckon if I was to have any drink, if I was like, ooh, I reckon coffee would be number one for me. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we're going, if we're going non-alcoholic... We're going any drinks. Any drinks. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, be- beers for me. I, I love beers so much. Um, coffee, yeah, absolutely delicious. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm i a big fan. It's a tie for third place for me. Um, strawberry milk, which is a bit, <laughs> a little bit 
Yeah, you know, you know, that's the sixty-year-old in you coming out. That's fine. It's a bit controversial. It might be. I think it takes a real man to to enjoy <laughs> strawberry milk um, and oh. openly admit it. Uh, and orange juice. I love orange juice, mate. OJ. Mm. OJ's OJ is good. What rounds it out for you? Oh, I'd say soda water and probably beers. How good are they? Yeah, but a lager. I used to be a big pale ale guy. No longer. Can't do them. Nah, yeah, I'm. I'm a. I'm mostly a lager guy. There's a few exceptions to the rule, but um, man, I was going to ask you: Is there anything in your life that you're pretty mid at? You know, just like run of the mill at that you just really wish you were good at? Uh, probably running, punting. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. Aside aside from punting, uh Running. Because uh, both of us are mid punters, just like I'd say 99% <laughs> of the population. Mate. That is true. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tough question. Um, I feel like the things that you do like every day, right? I feel like I can, I can cook to a, an acceptable standard. Like yeah. I'm not undercooking the chicken, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can make a, I like, I can make a nice cold drip coffee, which I have during the week. It's important. I can drive well. <laughs> yep. You got one of the most outstanding people <laughs> movers that I've certainly ever come across. Yeah. Larry gets the job done and he, he certainly does. He assists me more than I assist him. For sure. For sure. But yeah, mate, that's so off the top of the dome. If I'm thinking of like stuff, I wish I was a, a better runner, I okay. guess. Okay. Okay. I have a really poor capacity to run. Yeah. Okay. Just can't um what? Just can't bust out some KMs on the treddy. No. What about you? Um, well, the reason why I, I said it is because um, and last weekend again I was with the bros at mum and dad's and, and something we partake in uh, quite frequently is Mario Kart on, uh, the, on the Switch, okay. the new Nintendo. Mm. Um, and mate, I I am terribly terribly mid at that game. Okay. And then my brothers are really good and. And it's quite emasculating. <laughs> um, so much so to the point where I was just sick. I was just sick of, and I found myself, and this is so out of character for me. Mm. I found myself making excuses oh, and, no. and, and blaming and blaming the game itself. Like, you know, oh, I got hit, hit with a red shell at the, <laughs> at the worst possible time. Did you hate yourself? I did, I did. I, was, I, sat, and ref- I sat upon reflection later on that night and, you know, um, I'm fiance. thirty. I'm thirty years old now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, my fiance, gee, you just don't, you just haven't been right the last couple of weeks. <laughs> and I, I was thinking to myself, she's won't quite understand. She's probably thinking to herself, is he going to break off the engagement because he <laughs> hasn't been himself? Meanwhile, in my head, I was like, I wish I wasn't so mid at Mario. Kart. Oh my god! So guess who downloaded it last night? Oh. Just to prove a point. <laughs> just to prove a point, I was like, I'm sick of being shit at this game. I don't want to be mid anymore. I want to be good. So I downloaded it last night. So Drifters, I will keep you updated with my Mario Kart escapades. My goal is to beat my brothers. That's that's a good goal. Across like, you know, not just in one race. So I've won a few races, mm. but just, you know, how they add the points across like a six or eight race yeah. span. That's mm. my goal, Drifters. And okay. that's, that's my goal for the season. I don't particularly care about how I punt, <laughs> you know. It's all about Mario I'm, Kart. I'm happy to be a mid punter because you know there's there's so much out of control there. Mm. I can control my ability mm-hmm. to drive properly in Mario Kart. Mm. It's just a little update for you. I liked that. Never, I've never been a good gamer, ever. Zesty lemons aside, oh, yeah. one of the great basketballers of all time. <laughs> yeah, he's clearly, clearly the most dominant <laughs> basketball player in history. Yeah, when you average seventy games, twenty assists. Yeah. And probably 15 rebounds a game and about 12, 12 steals. Yeah. No one's putting up not those numbers ever. No, not at all. In the history um, of the damn thing. Zesty Lemons is making Luka Doncic look like <laughs> Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, before we get into the review, we wanted to say we are doing a live stream next Saturday for Blue Diamond Stakes Day. Um, so we will be promoting that during the week, but head to our YouTube channel. You'll see all the good stuff there. I'd say we'll probably kick things off because uh, it will be a quaddy companion, but we'll probably kick it off, I'd say, the race before. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to make sure. Um, There's five group ones, mate. So we can even check the timing of, of them and, and yeah. sort of start from there, what it, depending on what that kickoff point is. But yes, yeah, it's an enormous day of racing next, next Saturday. I couldn't believe my eyes when I was looking at the calendar. Yeah. And we've had some pretty, frankly, some really shit luck with the live streams to date. Yeah. Um, so we, the first time we did it, uh, Sydney got rained out. Um, so we'll just, I think we we're on our Pat Malone in, in Melbourne and it just took forever. Uh, and then the second time we did it was uh, the William Reed or whatever it was, the race that Bella Nipotina won. And then yeah. it got rained out again uh, before the Cox Plate. So that was, it was just very difficult stuff. But this time I feel like we're better for the run. Yep. We have a better setup now. We haven't done it in the new stewed. Yep. I've got a good feeling about next Saturday, mate. Yeah. Yep. Because, and we'll get to this eventually, but we're actually starting to hit our straps as a group, as a as a unit. As a conglomerate. Yes. But I named I was looking at the the podcast on that we did on Wednesday, right? I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna call it nature strip out. Just in case there is a strip out. Yeah. And the king. Mate, he ran fifth. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What, what do you reckon? It was it was um <coughs> it was sad to see, it was disappointing. Uh J Mac said apparently he really felt the run in his bones. Sixth even. Mm. On a good three. Mm. No, mate, it, it, it was disappointing. I, th- I thought he, he'd come back, you know, just the, the, the break would have done him absolute wonders. He would have came back super fresh. And, and even if he wasn't at his absolute best, I still thought he would have put that field away. Um, and, and, and he started off as if, as if that was going to be the case. Like he was at that nice sort of, Mm. On pay sort of position, just building into his work. But, um, you know, when Kool and Gatta said, let's go, he, he just couldn't keep up with her. Mm. No, it was, it was disappointing. Um, I think Marabi might have worried him out of it as well. She was just annoyingly beside him the entire time. Yeah, yeah, she was. And, and she faded as well. Um, you know, couldn't sustain that hot speed. I was, I was, watching, with, I was watching with Bradley, who, who backed Kool and Gatta. Um, Sensational bet. Which is a good result for, for uh, the drifters in our um, $100 betting strategy. Yes. Uh, and he said, I wanted you to lead. I wanted you to lead, talking about Cool and Gutter, uh, sort of halfway down the straight. And when she was just sitting off them, she sort of came back a little bit. And then all of a sudden she started to get her momentum. I was like, Bradley, she's going to win this, mate. Um, and classic Brad, just like, show them how good you are, girl. <laughs> Show them how good you are. Come on, princess. <laughs> Let's go, darling. <laughs> uh, and he was right, yeah. Um, uh, it was a great bet. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, I'd love to see I'd love to see the times out of that race. I haven't looked. Uh, I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now. So her last, where she won the race was from the 6 to the 400. Yep. She ran a 10.44. <laughs> so extremely fast. Even from the eight to the eight to the four, she went ten six six, ten four four, and then she went a ten three four. But the flashing light in the race has to be I wish I would. Oh mate. What a fucking run that was. <laughs> <laughs> this this thing was in no man's land. They had that bird's eye view, the the aerial view, which I'm which I'm not a massive fan of how long they keep it on for. Mm. Like if it's just initially out of the barriers, great. But then, okay, switch. switch as a, now. No, as it should be just be used as like, yes, out of the barriers so you know where they settle. Yeah. But five seconds max. That's what I mean. And then after the race, use, it's fantastic when it, you have it as like a post race. So, oh, then you can see you got held up, you know, yeah, who, for who was sure. in clear air. For sure. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Um, but yeah, he was, he, was in a no, he was in no man's land. Mm. And to, to come home like that over a thousand meters, holy dooly. Um, so, so, yeah, such a flashing light. And the only risk is, is if he does that in every single one of his races, there's a lot of horses I know that start so far back and come flashing home for an incredible second, third. But this, this, is, this is an exception to the rule, I think, Drifters, because first go over 1,000 metres, you'd think that's well and truly below his best distance. Mm. Um, 
and and he just looks so nice hitting the line. Like oh, the new mark of the handicap. I don't know what he's going to have on his on his back. Fifty five, <laughs> maybe. I was trying to look for that before. I couldn't find the weights at this stage. Yeah, he's he's not gonna he's not but he's not gonna be carrying weight for age uh, essentially mm. no. because even though he's won the Golden Eagle, that's not typically considered mm. um, when the handicappers are no. a lump and weights on on horses. Um, I think he's won a Group Two, maybe. Yeah, he, he's going to be so incredibly hard to beat in that race, mate. Yeah, do you believe that? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'm looking at the the other threats in the race, right? So he's second favorite. Yeah, he would be, yeah. In Secret's favourite, three dollars fifty with Ned's. I wish I wins about five bucks. That looks to me, that's a sensational bet. Oh, I um, think so. Cause in secret would probably be what, fifty fifty two, I'd imagine. As a um, three year old, yeah. Yeah, but she's won the group one. I don't know if they take that into consideration either. I'm not the handicapper. Um <laughs> But um the other the other threats in the race, I think, if they head that way. A uh, Buenos Noches, who mm. finished off quite nicely, really as well. nicely. But of the, I think of the three-year-old boys, Lofty Strike is still the one, and mm. you're going to get a better price for him. Mm. He's he's about that eleven dollars or so. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. It's um, it's going to be a cracking edition of the new market handicap, mate. Um, and and the Oakley Plate's looking like a, an absolutely um mm. ripper race this this autumn as well. Geez, we're blessed with some sprinters in this country, aren't we? Absolutely. But I wish I win, proved it on the clock and um, to those that are more of a eye guys, I'd say I'm a mixture of both, but I'm probably more of an eye guy more than others. Um, so, yeah, as you touched on, Bradley backed uh, Cool and Gatter for the $100 uh, Group 1 strategy and her starting price was $8.50. <laughs> Bang. There you go. So uh, a profit of 750 bucks into the kitty there. I had as my ultimate saver, I wish I'd win and cool and get her in a Quinella and the New South Wales Toad actually paid $36 for that. Oh, bang. So I had that five times, so I turned a profit there. We all have to lose one eventually, mate. Oh, man. <laughs> I like how I had a spec on <laughs> pretty much every horse that didn't run into oh. the placings except for I wish i win. But it is what it is. Um, oh, look, if... If I had to risk a horse, um, it was obviously, of course, going to be the one who won. So no, you can't yeah. win them all. It's um, all good. What was your reasoning for risking Cool and Gutter? Did you think just stepping up to this grade, she wasn't quite good enough? Um, to, do, you know, do you know what? It was the, her starting price profile, to be honest. And my logic was, I think Nature Trip wins, so I want to turn a decent profit if he does. Um, if I'm going to have a couple of $10 speculative bets... If I have one on, on Cool and Gatta, I'm thinking the punters will come for her and her, mm. her tote price is going to be like $5. Mm. So I was like, well, I'm, I'm prepared to risk mm. that. Um, not, I didn't think that – I didn't think she was going to win, um, but I, I was – I thought she was one of the threats. Does mm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, hindsight's a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. I think people were judging her – I heard a lot of people be – if if it's not Nature Strip, then who? And a lo- I saw a lot of people backing Buenos Noches. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. So I was I was thinking about it a bit in further detail. Now, the Coolmore, um, Coolmore stud, Buenos had a far more torrid run uh, and finished off into third there. But two things that were in his favour there, 1,200 metres, which I think he's, he's not a 1,000 metre horse, she is, and two, I think it was a soft track that day. Mm. She's proven that she needs she needs a fast track as well. Who? Cool and Gatter. Cool and Gatter, yeah. So, and it was a soft deck on uh, Coolmore Stud um, Day. So, I thought at the 1,000 metres, good three, she would be one of the main threats. And because I thought some people were going, oh, not, not sure about her going down the straight. Well... To be honest, if, if it's a thousand meters, it's a thousand meters, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I I'm not too fussed at where they. Oh, run. and she and she found the rail. Jamie Carr wrote, wrote her beautiful, uh, beautifully. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. So nature strip. He's continuing on with the prep. Maybe his maybe he is a twelve hundred meter horse these days. Yeah, with with Who nature knows? strip, you just you don't write him off. Uh, like that's that's a poor run, and, and he has been slightly disappointing in his last few since the shorts, really. Um, but. It, 
like yeah, he could, could he still win a TJ? Yes, I, I think he could still win a TJ. Mm. Um, you're going to get a better price about him, Drifters. So yeah, we'll wait and see. If he if he doesn't, if he fails, and it might be might be the the end of one of our best sprinters ever. I'd say the best since Black Caviar. Yep, hundred percent. Okay, let's go into the rest of our review. So let's go. We'll go two year olds, three year olds, and then the older ponies. So the two year olds. We'll start with the Talon Dirt. At Flemington, Mahabra. <laughs> Don't know if that's how you say it. It's just what you wanted to see. Yeah. On pace. He just put him away. Very professional. Very professional. He doesn't have his nuts as a two-year-old. So he's going to be racing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's professional. Um, do I see him winning group ones? Uh, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I think of the two-year-old crop, that was definitely the C graders. Yeah. Uh, and he... Is the best of those. So yep. take that as you will. It's Frank the Barber form, which you always like to see if you're keen on that pony heading into next the week's Blue Diamond. Blue Diamond. Mm. Uh, Silver Slipper. Now, this is more of a narrative. So, mm. King's Gambit, what do you reckon? Oh, he was, he was an, an early two year old who clearly, you know, had the edge on his juvenile um, cohort. Because he was probably up a bit earlier, you know, uh, and he ran that awesome debut race and hasn't quite managed to uh, to reach those lofty heights again. Could he come out and win a slipper? Yes, he could. Um, you know, I I'd, I'd be very concerned though if I was the Snowden camp with him. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Mm. He just he just couldn't go with him. Once, yeah. once they put on the pace, he just couldn't go with him. Um, I don't know what that says about him or or his nuts, but maybe he's, maybe he's just not interested anymore, which can happen for a two year old bloke. What do you mm. reckon? Had a look through that that very impressive win that he had at Caulfield. Mm. He's beaten nothing. Yeah, he's put some time on the clock, but he's beaten absolutely nothing. Now, a few of them haven't really raced on right, but. Some of them have, and it was only a small field, but there's been no subsequent winners from the race. Yep. Um, so I think that win has probably been overrated by by us, by the industry <laughs> uh, on the whole. I actually heard uh, Richo immediately after the race, Jason Richardson of Channel 7 fame. He was, he was going like, this could just be a Melbourne cult. He could just appreciate the mm. Melbourne way of going Rather, and he's just not quite letting down on the Sydney leg. We've seen it before, so you never, you never know. Um, That's a very astute point, Richo. Mm, so, and he, he doesn't miss. <laughs> Two-year-old picture, golden slipper. Yeah. Who's your pony at this stage? Um, I've got two uh, that I that I've been thinking about this week actually, and. And funnily enough, they're fillies again, mate. Because um, last year the fillies had the clear edge on the boys, remember? Mm-hmm. Um, Skirt the Law, Magic yes. Millions winner. She's done absolutely nothing wrong and she keeps improving every run. Um, and she's putting fields away, mate, which mm. you know, which I like to see. Uh, and learning to fly. Mm. Um, you know, it takes a good horse to win where, where she was uh, in, the, in the millennium. So they're, they're the two for me at the moment. That's some very good judging by you. So, learning to fly, $4 favourite for the Golden Slipper. Are you taking that price? Probably not. Probably uh, not, no. Skirt the Law, $7. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy with that price if she was out on the day, for sure. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I thought the best cult at this stage in the entire rankings is Red Resistance. Yeah, red resistance as well is actually one I forgot. Um, yeah, he 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 looked awesome on debut, didn't he? Because that was his only run, or was that his second run? Uh, it's his second run, and he beat uh, Steel City, who I'm seeing a lot of good judges are uh, specking in early markets as well. And Steel City is thirteen dollars, so if you want a bit more of a price, um, that's a good option there. Uh, but red resistance. Only been at the eleven hundred meters twice, but how many times has Water, Waterhouse had a really nice two year old? Good, tough, 
two year old yeah. Kyler who's who's professional on speed. It'll be on speed, and that's where you want to be in the in the slipper, mate. You you made the the very uh, informed point last year, mm. and then you tipped a back marker <laughs> <laughs> who won. But um, it but no, out. Yeah, but it worked out. But no, worked you want to you want to be sitting in the first third, don't you? Yeah. Um. But all right, so here, here's the market, right? So you have learning to fly four dollars, skirt the law seven, red resistant eight, barber ten, probably won't head there. No, king's gambit ten, blanc de blanc eleven. Okay, yeah, I think she was pretty good. Yeah, she was. Yeah, cafe millennium twelve. Now John O'Shea was saying he's probably more of a size horse, but surely Yips still have a throw at the stumps. Yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent. He's a, he's got fourteen hundred, sixteen hundred meters written all over him. That is <laughs> a big. Big boy, isn't he? <laughs> Big boy. He's enormous. <laughs> He's a triple shot. <laughs> <laughs> Cafe Millennium. Uh, holy, shit, holy shit. Yeah. Don Corleone, 13. Steel City, 13. And then Cylinder, the winner of the Silver Slipper, has come into $17. Uh, I think we said he was about 60s during the week. So well. if you liked him, back him. Um, but good old fan with these two-year-olds, mate. They are sensational. Professional. Um, so, Red Resistance for me... Learn to fly, skirt the law for you. Yep. Three-year-olds. Some interesting races to unpack here. So we had the Vanity, one by Wollumbai, Elliptical, in the CS Hayes, yep. and then we had Ossipenko in the Hobartville. <laughs> Let's start with the Vanity. Yeah. Wollumbai, Sydney mid, midweek grade, that has proven to be good enough. With the Melbourne Phillies. Oh, Sydney's just the Sydney form, mate. It's just the best form in the country, isn't it? Mm. Apart from the Stradbroke handicap of, of 2022. <laughs> Considered the greatest form race of all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, I don't have any strong opinions on that race, mate. It was a, um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what she did do was post the fourth fastest 200 meter split of the really last 200 meter split of the meeting. Uh, that was with a thousand meter and eleven hundred meter race on the program. Well, so okay. I think she was she was actually pretty smart. Um, think she'll be suited out to further with those stats. Extreme choice, mate. Her sire, he's he's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying yesterday that his um, his stakes win percentage, not just his winners percentage in his progeny, his stakes winners percentage is like sixteen percent or something absurd, mate. Uh, unbelievable. There you go. See, he is a breeding guy. <laughs> uh, CS Hayes. This was the win of the day for me, elliptical. Yeah, it was enormous. Blake Shin's such a good jockey, mate. I'm a big fan of, of Blake Shin. Mate, they don't win being last without cover. Three wide, um, no cover, about third last. They don't win from there. I've seen it once in my life. Yeah. That was Russian Camelot in the SA Derby. Oh. It was an arrogant, arrogant ride and it came off for him. Oh, love that horse. Um yeah, that, that was that was a huge win, huge win, mate. Um, I was on Bankmore. I think a lot of people were on Bankmore. Um, he got crunched in. He the got game. absolutely crunched uh, for good reason, you know that Jack, you know, form. Mm. Um, but the wheels were spinning for him, and, and Elliptical just kept finding the line. Um, yeah, he'll he'll start favourite, you'd think, for the for the Aussie Guineas now, mm. depending on who they send down from Sydney. That's the only thing that can beat him, I think. Yeah, like, nothing that finished behind him is going to beat him. I don't, th- I don't reckon. Um, no. Yeah. Maybe that run has taken the edge off him a little bit, but then you're just you're just guessing at that point. Yeah, like, you're looking you're looking for yeah. chinks in the armor, which yeah. you, know, you know we've learned um, is is not the right way. If yeah. if he loses, you're like, okay, cool, you accept it, but mm-hmm. you don't you don't not back him because of because of that thought. Yeah, absolutely right. One I did find in the race who I thought was quite a nice run for something further was Miramasa. He was about fourteenth last at three hundred meters. He finished off into ninth, but about 100 metres past the post, he was up with the leaders. Yeah. He's he's a stayer. His trials have been really nice. Uh, he is heading towards a Rose Hill Guineas or an Australian Derby. Yep. So, you know, he'll probably be up against the likes of Sharp and Smart. So, but if you like something that's going to probably head there third up or so, he could be the one. Aft Cabin. Mm. What are your thoughts? Um. Geez, TC spent a lot of his tickets throughout the ride, didn't he? Mm. Timmy Clark. Um, I, I get that. They wanted the lead on him. Um, 
and, and I understand that. But you know, Tim Clark's a great jockey, fantastic jockey, elite. Uh, so I don't want to bag him. If J Mac had that ride, that ro- that race is is not unfolding that way. J Mac's just finding a spot. You know, even if it's midfield, even if the horse likes the lead, doesn't matter. He's he's finding a spot. He made him do so much work. So I. I wouldn't be reading too much into that. Aussie Panko, we know, is a good horse. Um, I, I'd, I'd still prefer to be on Aft Cabin for the for the Ramwick Guineas than Aussie Panko, personally. Um, he, he just did way too much work in the run, so that's a forgive job for me. Mm. Was Nash on Aussie Panko? Nash was, yeah, hot Nash. That was a sensational ride. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Aussie Panko sit that close. Yeah, because hot Nash shows, shows initiative, mate. <laughs> it's hot Nash. Um, no, yeah, so... Drifters, if you're listening and, you know, if, if you're completely riding off our cabin, do it at your own peril. Um, if he fails in the round with guineas, then, yeah, you can, you know, you can throw some chat at me after that. But, nah, he's still my horse in the round with guineas and now you're just going to get a bit of price. Let me have a look at round with guineas market. Getting $4.80 for him now. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'll take that. <laughs> Osipenko, six. Zoo Tiger, six. He's a good tough horse, Zoo Tiger. He um, he's he's going to find one better, I think. Mm. Jack in 07, he probably won't he- head there. What made me a little bit, um, I guess, questioning Af Cabin is two things. It's coming off a bleed. Mm-hmm. So will he potentially bleed again? There's a saying, unfortunately, once a bleeder, always a bleeder. Um, and... Matcha Latte in Williamsburg ran past him. He was checked, <coughs> pardon me, he was checked um, about 100 or 200 from the line. <coughs> but I don't know. I would have liked to have seen him finish off a little bit nicer. Yeah, he just spent way too many tickets. Way too many tickets. Mm. All right. What about the Australian guineas then? Jack and O three dollars fifty. Can he run a mile? Yes. Against his own age, yes. Okay. Yep. Aft cabin six, he won't head there. No. Legato, it's the New Zealand hill horse, I believe. Yep. Uh, sevens, attrition eight, finished off quite nicely. But again, elliptical is eight bucks. That's You're taking good. the eight bucks for elliptical over attrition. And then probably gold mile is the other one at yeah. eight dollars. $8. Yeah. No, yeah, I'd <coughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be inclined towards my guy Jack. Mm. Um, if he heads there, and if if he does, and then yeah, you're taking the eight bucks with elliptical for sure. Mm. Agreed. So you're taking Jack and O in the Australian Guineas and Af Cabin. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, yeah, I'll take Af Cabin in the Rama Guineas and I'll, mate, eight bucks for elliptical. Yes, please. All right, older horses on the day. Ana Visto. Yeah, easy. My girl. She's a bomb fresh, isn't she? 1,400 metres, hard deck. Um, J Car on. Yeah, that was easy. That watch. was a good go. Easy watch. Um, $2 was a gift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she got, she got me off the canvas. Because um, mm. I didn't really have any particular big bets before. I don't bet big. Uh, I didn't really have any particular big bets um, before her, but I, <laughs> none of them came off. And yeah, she got me off the canvas and it was mm. up and away from there. Uh, Scalopini, uh, I believe we were saying on the podcast, I don't think you had too many firm opinions on the race. No, nah, no. Nah. Um, I was weighing up Scalopini and Uncle Bryn. Put on Uncle Bryn on top. He was good, but... Never trust your uncle. <laughs> um, but Scalopini just did it from the front and just put him away. It's good on us all, Scalopini. Yep. Uh, eight years old now. Yeah. Uh, and in Sydney, in the Millie Fox, uh, Pavitra, my roughy of the day, um, she ran okay for something longer. Uh, Maria Mears just come to end of prep, you'd think. Yep. Um, Electric no, yeah, Girl. Put us fi- in the paddock, Jason. <laughs> Electric Girl finally finds a good track. And she shows what she's actually about. So yeah, she no, was quite good. good. She was good. And King Frankel did it for his daddy. <laughs> he did. He did. No, I, look, I had King Frankel, you know. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, he 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 looked like he needed every single bit of the nineteen hundred meters before the race, mm. and as the race unfolded, that was the case. So no, he's he's a nice emerging stayer. Um, be interesting to see what sort of weight he gets for. Like he, like is he a Sydney Cup type or is he a? <laughs> I think that's what they're heading towards. Probably a Metrop. Yeah, he's a oh, good Metrop horse. Oh yeah. wait, that's in the spring, that's in the spring, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, don't worry about that. No, um, he's he's a he's a he's a good. Yeah, mm. handicap. I think um, mm. stayer type. Like mm. he's not he's not winning you a Tancred at weight for age. Nah, but yeah, nah. I I don't think so. But you know, I I looked at that. I'm like, the ones finishing behind him are wanting further. They're quite slow. Mm. I don't think anything because he and Banju was the only one that was right up beside him. He's Rock hard fit. Yeah, he is rock hard. So fit. it's like, okay, I think King Frankel has a bit more upside here. Yeah, yep. yeah. I'm happy to stick with him for the, at least the next run. Yeah. Who was, you know, the horse that you want to follow, run of the day type of stuff? Oh, Captain Obvious, but um, the Peter Moody horse in the Lightning Stakes. I wish I win. Massive flashing light mm. uh, for him in that race. Aside from that, yeah, there's not anything in particular that overly excites me. Um, I think that Philly Paris, Parasol um, that mm. won the benchmark 74, I believe, the Godolphin Philly, um, she had some weight relief as well. Uh, I was on economics. He got scratched. As soon as I saw him, it's so hot before the race, sweating up. Sec- and mate, plus, second time he's done that. Yeah, exactly. So so I was I was really keen on him for the Coolmore stud, uh, but he got scratched late scratch from a race, uh, a key lead-up race for that. Um, but, yeah, and, and I was also looking at the clock. But before he even got into the gates, mate, it was already like the, the race I should have ran three minutes or four minutes earlier. And it's just like, well, it's so hot out there. These are three-year-old things. Get, get them in and get them away. Anyway, um, no, I think she's a smart little filly, Parasol. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you? I think Bella Nipitina will go over to WA and just put him away in the quokka. Boy, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> good mare. She is very good. And arguably, if if they find some rain over there, she'll be even better suited. Like, she was very, very good mm. running into third. September run was nice too. Yeah, um, she was. I think just keep it at all the straight track races. Yep. Uh, Buenos Noches. Yep. Yeah, the lightning, you know, it's, yeah. it's been a gr- – it's, yeah, it's going to – Proved to have some winners out of it. Yeah. Um, outside of that, yep, Uramasa, as I as I mentioned, for something further, um, I think he could feature in a Rose Hill or the Australian Derby. Um, and yeah, with the two year olds just chopping and changing, I like the ones that are with the proven form. I reckon Red yeah. Resistance is another one that you can take out of it. Hundred percent. That's about it. Hundred percent. Right, good stuff. Live stream next Saturday, 25th of Feb for Blue Diamond Stakes Day at Sandown. Oh, mate, we didn't even touch on it. We won the quarter yesterday. Yeah, two in a row, mate. It's just what we're about now. What do you mean? It's just what we're about now. Oh, it feels good. It feels so good, man. See, look, yeah, I refuse to be mid. I refuse yeah. to be mid at winning quarties. You know, we've turned, we've turned, we've turned a corner. It's what it, this is what it felt like. First year that we really got into our work, we're talking like Waterloo hotels type of type of stuff. We were winning a quaddy like every second week. Yeah, we were. Yeah, and it's like oh, this is easy. This is easy. <laughs> How wrong we were. So wrong. It was bloody bloody hard. Uh, but yeah, two from two, Group One season. It's good stuff. Look out. Look out. Drifters will be back on Wednesday previewing the Blue Diamond Stakes Day meeting. Um, so. Look out for us then. See you then. Hooroo.